came in Bahrain in 2006. I guess it's making it 11 years here in Bahrain. I first got here, I was employed with a, with a magazine. It's, uh, and that was my first job and my only job before I shifted career. Uh, I, st I was there for about, I think about seven, seven years. After which, uh, four or five years back, that's when I thought, why not try to go into entrepreneurship? Kasi yun na yung time na nagkakagulo. Na, uh, no, it's after nagkagulo, bumalik ako. And then I thought, bakit hindi kong subukan maging entrepreneur? Kung ginagawa naman ng iba, why can't I, di ba? What's, what's stopping me? So I thought, sige, I'll give it a shot. If I fail, I always have the option to go back home. If I succeed, and then at least I, I tried, and then I'll be here. I, I, I am where I am now. So that, that's how it started. Um, so mainly I started as an employee and then shifted to being an entrepreneur. So right now, um, my company, which is an advertising and events management company, is on its almost, what, fifth year um, in, the, in the industry. And we've handled a lot of international brands. And for a while there, I thought na hindi namin kakayanin because I started it all alone. But later on, uh, you know, people started to trust you. It was, it was a very hard struggle, especially with, the, uh, you know, with how people perceive Filipinos here in the Middle East. Sad to say, uh, we're, para tayong, we're, we're being stereotyped as, you know, home, pang ano lang, pang bahay, um, or if you're a male, then you're an engineer. And there were a lot of times that I encountered that in every meeting that I went to the first first two years of, of the company. And then this is a patriarchal society. And so when they get to face a woman who's in authority, they don't believe you. They tell you na, are you really the owner? No, no, show me your boss. I want to meet your boss. Or if they want to haggle a price, they tell me, no, I don't think you're the decision maker. You need to combat that, you know, to, to succeed. So it was a very trial moment for, it was a very trying moment for me. Um, but so far, you know, mabait ang Diyos. So I was given this opportunity. And then when I, when I was given a big break to do a big fashion here, actually in this mall, in Moda Mall, that's how everything started. And then clients, they, they referred clients to me and that's how I built the reputation of Media Circuit. Now we're more into a um, luxury fashion um, events management company. I was not surprised that he decided to come here uh, because I've been hearing it that, you know, he plans to go to the Middle East because I think that's where he got most of his support during the, the election time. But I was very happy um, that he included Bahrain. No, because in the Middle East, um, Bahrain has, I think, the, less, the, the least population of, Filipino, of working Filipinos. In the marketing aspect, I know that Bahrain receives a very small piece of the pie. So hindi ko inisip na masasama. I was happy that he was coming to the to the Middle East, but when I heard that Bahrain is included, syempre I was ecstatic. Um, and uh, I think I think it's it it has an impact in in Bahrain. Um, ma mainly the Filipinos in Bahrain kasi it's different when your president come here, you know, comes here to visit and personally thank you for all the support. I encourage you na to support the programs that the government is um, is, ha is currently having. Siyempre, andyan sila ambassador and then andyan ang embassy. But it takes on a different level kapag na-meet mo personally yung presidente mo. Na he himself is the one reaching out to you and, you know, imploring you to believe in his cause, to believe in the cause of the government, to believe that this government is going to be, you know, a better government. Um, not comparing with, with any other governments, but he just believes it. You know, he, he will do his best to lead to lead the country and, and the government in itself. It's different in a sense that it's it's a nation, it's a national scale. Na eh. it's, it's it's a national scale. So his governance is different from when he was a mayor in the sense na dati maliit lang. You know, it was local governance lang. Right now he's handling the entire country. You cannot expect him. We're no mayor siya. We can just knock any time at his doorsteps, right? We even people like simple people like me, na um, not into any you know no political affiliations. If we knock on his door, he would easily you know 
accommodate us. But it's different now. But I think that's the only difference. Uh, he may not be the one personally assisting us, but I feel na I feel na yung governance niya. He really instilled in his people on how he want Philippines to be governed as a nation. Sa Davao, he was an iron fist. He's strict, he's firm, but he's, he cares. We, we felt, we feel that he cares. And I think right now, that's still how I perceive him, even if he's already the president of the country. I know that he's still, you know, he's still very stiff with, with his belief or with his laws or whatever implement, implement in the mga laws in the country. But I also know he does this because there is a purpose for it because he cares more of, of the welfare of the, of the Filipinos. So I think wala namang, may, may difference, but it's more of how he, siguro ha, paano niya i-deploy yung mga tao niya. And mainly because it's, it's not on a personal level anymore. But although, kasi hindi, hindi kaya, it's not possible to, to actually address one person, you know, every, every day. Or, so, so yun. So I think that's, that's the big difference. But in terms of how he governed Davao City as to, how he governed the country now, I think it's still the same. Of course, the one that's closest to my heart, that's for the OFWs. Um, I know that he's got the one-stop counter, you know, when we're in all the concerns of uh, the OFWs are addressed, as nasa isang building na lang. I know he implements that and he's implementing it in every, he's trying to um, spread it in all the different towns in, in the country. Siyempre, bilang OFW, that's the closest to my heart, so I, so I like that. I like the fact na, Wala na OEC um, because honestly, before it was such a burden to get an OEC, the long queue, you know, the hours that you spend. Um, so I was happy that na wat na wala na yon. Um, yeah, and 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 we feel that I think for the first time that I was an OFW in the last eleven years, this is the first time that I've heard. Or, or I have a, a president who actually reached out you know, to the OFWs and actually implemented this. Um, so, just setting an example, Laglag Bala. I was scared to go home to, to the country because I don't want victimize ng Laglag Bala. Apart from the hassle, you don't want to 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 hassle, you don't want you're a terrorist because you're carrying bullets. But when he stepped up, Suddenly, na wala. So because you know, a lot of he, I guess he heard a lot of the pleas of the OFWs coming home and then they victimized, and then they lose a lot of time. Na to, instead of spending it with their family or nakaset na yung kanilang mga destinations, pabalik, masa stop because you know they get all these hassles because of this like bala. So that's just setting an, an example. One is you need to believe in yourself. Uh, take pride of being a Filipino. No, wag kang maniniwala pag sinabing Pilipino ka lang. You should you should say instead, Fil Pilipino ako. You know, because I think that's one of the major factor why a lot of Filipinos here they're afraid to you know to take opportunities, kasi natatakot sila na you know, they get they get judged or maybe they cannot make it because Filipinos lang sila. It's it's gonna it's not gonna be easy, but as long as you have you know you have faith in yourself, um, and and wag kang padadala sa kung ano mang you know sabihin ng iba. Just always believe that you can do it, and never underestimate yourself because you are you know we Filipinos are as good as any other um, you know people in in other countries. So mainly there. So yeah, just just take get all. Take on all the opportunities that you can get. Take on all the challenge. Believe in yourself, and then I'm pretty sure that you know you'll succeed in life.